Hi everyone, uh, kia ora to all the Kiwi back home. My name is Joseph Apu. I now reside here in Sydney, been here since 1994 with my wife and children. And I've uh, been invited to present an uh, online video for this education weekend in New Zealand. So if you've logged on and uh, are having a look, great to meet you. So I hope that what I have to present will be of help to you. So just a little bit of a background to me. Um, born in New Zealand, but moved over here. And been working as a printer for most of my life, but had a burning desire to really just go back to school and do a music degree. I wanted to really find out what music had to offer. So initially we arrived in 1994. I went to a couple of open days at some of the tertiary institutions here in Sydney. One of them that really caught my eye was AIM, the Australian Institute of Music. But at the time, I didn't have the money to go and I wasn't a citizen of Australia. And to apply to get what they call fee help over here, I had to be an Australian citizen. And so I had a young family and decided to just keep on printing and support, pay the rent, pay the bills, you know the story. But in 2014, my wife and I were talking seriously about what, you know, you still have that burning desire to finish your degree. So that's what I did. In 2016, uh, no, sorry, 2014, I went back to school, enrolled at AIM, and decided to do my music degree. When I decided to go back to AIM, I was working a full-time job and gave all that away. So, my good, beautiful wife, Anna, was the breadwinner. So at 55 years of age, I went back to school. So in AIM, the degrees take two years at that time. So full-time study was six trimesters in two years, and it was full on. So I had to take eight subjects every trimester. So you had five core subjects that related to your degree, and then you had three electives that you could choose from. Now for the first two trimesters, those three electives were already given to you. You had to take those. Then from trimester three, four, five, and six, you could take whatever electives you had. So to me, it was like being in a lolly shop. So I, for my electives for trimester three, four, five, and six, I took jazz improv, I took Latin music, uh, arranging, orchestration, and I forgot what the other one was, but I learned so much in all those individual electives about how to arrange for a, a jazz group, uh, how to arrange for a choir, how to write an orchestration out from one melody. And so my daily routine with my dear wife was we come home, she come in from work, I come in from school, we go have dinner and then she go to the bedroom and then I go to the lounge and just work on my assessments. I even did assessments most of the times. I was working till like three in the morning, four in the morning and then getting two hours sleep and then going to my first lecture at nine. But that's the sacrifice you have to do if you're deciding to go back to school, especially university study. And a lot of the lecturers were telling me, well, welcome to, to university study. That's, look, most of the lecturers, that's what they did. They would work till three, four in the morning, easy, just to get that uh, degree. They have various degrees. So if you can see on the, behind me, uh, they offer these various degrees in music, so music management, uh, performance degree, and then they have postgraduate degrees as well. So I've been performing ever since I was nine, uh, playing in little restaurant bars, um, playing in bands, and had the opportunity to play with a bunch of guys back in New Zealand who just taught me so much. They were known as the bronze spirit back then, but they were, these guys were awesome. So I learned a lot from them. 
uh, playing in a band and what it did, took to read charts and all that. So when pondering on what degree I was going to do, I sort of swayed away from doing a performance degree. I really felt like I've performed quite a bit. So I decided to do a Bachelor of Music degree in Composition and Music Production. Now, I even put it up on their site just as composition, but it really incorporates composition and music production. Now, I wanted to do it because it was something different. I've never done it before. And believe me, when I went back to school, the technology that they use now was a bit over my head at the start. So I was a bit lost. But with the help of my classmates, the younger generation, the young generators, whatever you may call them, they really helped. And so I shared my knowledge of music theory and composition with them. So it really worked for me. And so I decided on doing the Bachelor of Music in composition and music production. Now what was required, I had to be an Australian citizen, so I had to take out Australian citizenship, which I did. I had to do an audition, and in the audition I was required to write three originals and put them on a flash drive, do a theory test, and have an interview. So it was funny, so when I went for the interview, the organizer, coordinator asked me for my flash drive and I gave it to him and had all my three originals on it and he went to set it up and in about a minute I handed back the theory paper the test and he was shocked he said oh you, you finished and then he looked at it and he said oh yeah you, you're in you know so he looked he listened to my originals and said oh you're ready to start in the bachelor class you know in a month's time so what are you going to hear and see in a few moments is the result of me taking jazz improvisation classes and arranging classes. So I had some of the best teachers Sydney, in Australia for that matter that were at the top of their game in jazz composition and jazz harmony and jazz improv and arranging. So I would like, so what you're going to see is me playing the original of I'm a Child of God and what you're going to hear moments later is my reharmonization of I'm a Child of God and that reharmonization is a result of learning how to reharmonize songs. So I've been reharmonizing and jam practicing jazz standards but it didn't occur to me until I said well why don't I try reharmonizing some of the church hymns in the Green Hymn Book? So that's what I started off with. And as a result, what you're going to see is the original version first, and then uh, after that you'll hear my reharmonized version of I'm a Child of God.
So to show you another side of what I did in my degree in composition, we had to compose um, music to film and to ads. And so one of the projects that I did at school was the Google ad when they were introducing their new browser, Chrome browser. And so what you'll see first is the original ad that had the original music on it. It's about 30 seconds long, I think. And that's the Google ad that was sent around the world and used in their marketing of their new Chrome browser. So in class, we were asked to compose our own music. So what you're going to hear are two versions that I did. And so I decided from what I heard from the first, uh, from the original Google ad, so the brief for the people writing the music for the Google ad was everything inside the screen had to be moving at a frenzy and fast paced rate. But everything outside the screen had to be slow. So the music had to incorporate that and reflect that motion of slowness outside and in speed inside the screen. So first up, you'll see the original ad that was used around the world and then my two versions of the Google ad. Hope you enjoy. One of the things at school that, especially in composition, we were given um, a class that we had to attend, it was a film composing class. And it was over a period of uh, nine to 12 weeks. So uh, three students, we were given the assignment of writing background music to a, a very famous Alfred Hitchcock movie. Now, we only wrote, not the whole movie, but just a segment of it. And the uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie is called The Birds. And there's a scene in it where the kids are in a classroom and the teachers are telling them that they have to run. And it just carries on from there. So the, set, the clip that we had to write music for was like four minutes and 30 seconds. And the three students that Oh, sorry, the two other students that I wrote with, uh, Jacob Bourne was uh, one, and Chantal Burke. And we all were given parts of the clip to compose music for. So the first clip you're going to see is the original clip from the movie, the four minutes, 30 seconds of the Alfred Hitchcock movie, where there's no music. It's just dialogue and sound effects of the birds. The second clip you're going to see is the combined collaboration of Jacob, Chantal and myself, given certain parts of where we had to compose music for, and we put it all together. So Jacob had the task of uh, compiling all our compositions together, laying it down in logic, then he had to mix it and master it and then time code it to the movie so that it fitted uh, scenes and actions 
So that's why the time code's on the bottom. Hope you enjoy. I want you to go as quietly as possible. Do not make a sound until I tell you to run. Then run as quickly as you can. Now, does everybody understand? Yes, All right, John, you lead the way. Dad, are you home? I want you to go as quietly as possible. Do not make a sound until I tell you to run. Then run as quickly as you can. Now, does everybody understand? All right, John, you lead the way.
down? Are you home? I'd just like to share with you a sample of what I learned about arranging. So, in my arranging class, our, one of our assessments was to take a jazz standard that was familiar with a lot of people, and then we had to write it for five saxes, four trumpets, and four trombones, uh, bass guitar, lead guitar, or rhythm guitar, sorry, uh, piano and drums. So I remember my first attempts at trying to do an arrangement. Um, oh, well, it wasn't very good. It was it wasn't very neat. But I got to the stage where I was in my third trimester of doing arranging, and so for this particular assessment, I chose "Over the Rainbow." So I know a lot of you may know the song "Over the Rainbow," but I decided to write it for those instruments that we had to and I wrote it in the cha-cha-cha because I'm very uh, fascinated with the Afro-Cuban music that they have especially when they write in clave so I decided to write over the rainbow with cha-cha-cha and as you can see on the screen I'll just uh, manipulate the screen so you can see so if you have yeah. over here I have the top row of uh, instruments there on baritone sax, four trumpets, five trombone or oh, four trombones, sorry, guitar, piano, bass guitar, and drums. So I basically had to write out all the chords and what notes the trumpets and the saxes and the trombones would play. And as you can see here, this is how. A proper arranging chart should be. Now this is the full score chart. Now every horn player will get just the individual chart of what is written on here but for the full score this is what it looks like. So I just just want to play you a little bit of what it may, what it sounds like when I... so hopefully you can hear this. So just, just a sample, um, I apologise that this program that I wrote it on uh, and I used at school is called Sibelius. So all the sounds are computer generated, so they're not the real horns. Um, I have a video of the actual horn recording, but I can't for the love of me find it to put it in the presentation. So if you can just imagine that's... The sounds of the horns and the piano just generated through Sibelius, so they're not the real horn sound. 
as my arranging teacher told me, it's better to hear your arrangement with the, the live horns in the session. So I never got the opportunity to hear the live session because it was recorded down in Melbourne. But I got the video clip on it, but for the life of me, I can't seem to find it. But hey, as long as you've got a general idea of what arranging uh, requires, and so like if you're asked to arrange for a choir, uh, orchestra, uh, a jazz ensemble like this, and they give you a tune, then you have to see how are you going to arrange it rhythmically, mel melodically, and where you're going to put your chords in the horns, um, what the rhythm section is going to sound like in comparison to the horns, so that one is not overbearing the other, has to be a balanced sound. Uh, just for your information, I got uh, a high distinction for this arrangement, which I was pretty proud of. My arranging teacher was very happy. He did say that it was a very, very unusual uh, version of it. He said that over the rainbow, he said, uh, I totally didn't dis uh, I totally didn't respect it because over the rainbow, as you know, is a nice, uh, beautiful, slow tune. But I took it 180 and turned it into a African Cuban cha 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 uh, genre kind of. Uh, take on it and so hopefully that wasn't too much for you guys but I enjoyed it I enjoyed composing it that way and arranging it that way hope you enjoy
Goodbye, everyone. Hopefully, what I've presented in this presentation has been beneficial for you to realize and know what it takes to go back to school. In my case, going back to school at 55 years of age and doing a music degree here in Sydney. So, you know, getting the Australian citizenship and all that. So I hope this has been helpful and information to you so that you know exactly what it takes. I, I don't know what it takes to do a degree at a later age back home. It must be better, you know, because you're New Zealand citizens and funding must be much easier and getting loans. I'm not sure. But to finish off this presentation, I'd like to share with you my reharmonized version of the New Zealand National Anthem. Now, part of my daily practice, my jazz improv teacher dropped it into me that I should be practicing three to four hours a day. So I practice three hours regularly every day, uh, hour in the morning and two hours at night when everybody's asleep. And part of my practice is to reharmonize. So we just pick a song and add to it, change the rhythm, uh, change melody, uh, add real open voicings to chords. So what you're going to hear, uh, New Zealand's National Anthem, is my reharmonized version that I do as practice. Thanks, guys.